It's Tuesday, February 6, 2024. So this, so far this week, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, I've been mostly working in the shop, cleaning up. There's always a collection of stuff that doesn't belong in there and it becomes a problem when woodworking season comes by. I need to get busy at my woodworking projects, but I also need to clean up that shop first. It's coming along well, um, but I was out here in the yard coming by my piles of lumber that I cut up, my piles of plywood I cut up the other day, and I noticed something that I wanted to show you uh, just point out. It's an illustration to something I talked about earlier. So you can see the piles of plywood that I cut up. These are the, um, the pallet bottoms. Now each one of these pieces makes two pallets. And then these are the offcuts. So those will make covers. But these have been sitting out here and we've been experiencing some rain. Uh, just light misty rain, nothing too heavy. You can see the sides of this stuff is not even wet. But look at what's happened to that top sheet. In both of these cases. See how it's bowed up here. So this is an illustration of something I've talked about a couple of times. Now don't forget this pallet, this isn't one pallet, it's two. So the long way of the pallet is this way. It's across this way. So the runners on the pallet, or the risers on the pallet will go this way. And then the runners will go sideways as well. And I had somebody just asking me this just the other day. And generally, you want to put the grain direction of plywood uh, the long way on your piece. So what's happened here is this plywood only has four laminations, which most of my plywood has six. And I think that speaks to uh, the fact that it's cheaper plywood. And so what's happened here is this top lamination, well, I'll start by saying the grain on the top one, as you can see, runs this way. The grain on the second one will run the opposite direction. This one here uh, also runs that direction. And then this one at the bottom also runs this way. So you've got two each. Wood uh, expands and contracts across the grain, not with the grain, okay? Technically, I suppose you could say that it does, but really not in a considerable way. It's, it's not something that you ever really need to take it into account, unless perhaps you're building a bridge, but I don't build bridges. Uh, so what's happened here, you can see, well, the wood doesn't expand on the second and third laminations. It doesn't expand in this direction, but this uh, lamination does. So what's happened is the top layer has gotten wet and it's expanded. And so then that's made this bow up into an arc because the bottom layer hasn't been wet and it hasn't expanded. So the bottom layer is still short and the top layer got long. These two layers didn't expand in this direction. They likely expanded in that direction, but not to the degree of this layer because it's not like this wood is completely saturated in water. It's actually, um, it's actually uh, got a disproportionate amount of moisture in the different laminations. I think it'll be fine. I just need to dry it and uh, it'll come back into shape. These haven't moved because there's a considerable amount of weight on those. So I just wanted to show you that because that's an illustration of something and why I like to cut my plywood with the grain running the direction that I do. Now, these are covers. 
So the gr grain direction on the cover goes across this way, right? And then the cupping, the tendency to cup is across this way, but then I have my top cleat and my end cleat to stabilize that from cupping. And that is that. So you can see behind me, the shop looks a little better than it has. Uh, I found the table saw for the most part. And I think what's gonna happen first is that plywood will come in here. I'll leave it in here for a couple days to dry and then it'll go across the table saw, cut it to final size, cut it to final size before assembly and then most of it gets trimmed yet again. Uh, so, like I say, it's a slow process. I'm not very good at this. I don't know where things go. I don't have storage for everything and, and uh, I don't know where they should go. I haven't seen my workbench in a long time. <laughs> So uh, I think I'll leave you with that. Appreciate you watching. And I'll update you when more stuff happens in the wood shop. Take care and have fun. It's Wednesday, February 7th, 2024. Oh, you can see here I took my dust collector apart. <laughs> so I'm kind of dead in the water as far as using the table saw now. But uh, today I got the tractor and I moved in my uh, pallet pieces that I cut up and that was partly because the forecast is calling for rain and snow. I thought, you know, I'll bring those in here. I made some space, so bring those in here and uh, they can warm up and dry out a bit uh, before I run them across the table saw. But I got some work to do before I can use a table saw because as I say, I've taken my dust collector apart. Uh, there's pieces of it here. There's pieces of it sitting over here. Uh, so I've got to get busy and, and finish this off. Uh, so I'll, I'll kind of show you what I've got in my mind here. Most of the pieces are a bit too heavy to hold up here to show you. So you'll have to visualize this. I want to mount the motor and blower up high here onto this wall. I'll probably be putting some two by sixes on here and, and pushing that over here a bit. And then the blower from that motor will come out this way. And this, this part here will turn around. You can just barely see the inlet here. And the blower blows into this part. So I have to make a, a bracket to hold this up here uh, for the blower to blow into. Now the advantage there is it's gonna be a very short run. So the blower, you know, the shorter the runs you can have with a dust collection, air movement system, uh, the better. So hopefully I can do that. And on top of this ring goes either the filter that I bought, and I don't know if I'm going to reuse that, or the filter bag that was on here beforehand. On the bottom goes the collection bag that the uh, very fine sawdust goes into. So why am I putting that blower up here on this wall? Well, because I want to install this cyclone system. This is an Oneida Super Dust Deputy. And what these things do is the intake of the air and the, and the uh, dust and whatnot uh, is, is here. So everything comes whistling in here and you can see that this is kind of a ramp so it pushes all of the debris down and it gets it going in a, a cyclone fashion inside here and it eventually just goes straight out the bottom into the bin and the blower then pulls air out of here what you can't see in here is this pipe goes down maybe about this far right so it's not pulling air directly from here it's causing a vacuum in here, which makes all the stuff come in there. So this thing then flange mounts to a, um, you can't see it, but I've got my, my dust collection garbage can thing here. So it'll flange mount on top of that. So this thing will mount sort of kind of like this. 
and the blower will be right on top of it there it may be over this far but that's what i'm trying to accomplish i'm trying to create something that is mounted uh, something that includes this this cyclone to get better separation of the large particles and the you know the smaller particles from the airstream uh, to keep keep the filter and the filter bag cleaner I'm looking at this filter here and it's pretty heavy especially it's got a lot of debris in it look at the look at the inside of this thing I don't even want to move it because it's such fine dust it's finer than flour uh, so I think what's been going on here is the pleats in this filter just get so uh, clogged it doesn't allow any dust through and you say well these flappers inside take care of that and maybe they do but maybe i'm just not diligent enough with them you can see how they turn around knock the dust off and that's really not what i want to do that is terrible stuff it's it's extremely fine dust so i will decide if i'm going to use that or not so i'm going through the process of trying to modify things trying to get things to fit together and i'm having limited success one of the things I had to do, or I wanted to do, this is very heavy too, <coughs> is this motor system, this blower was mounted so that the blower um, came up. Let's see, how did it come up there? Came up this way, came up this way to blow into that other piece there. Now I wanted it to come out this way, so, I had to take take off the flange. I took the impeller off. I unbolted this from the motor and from the stand, turned it, drilled new holes. I need to buy some bolts in town to put this back together. And now when I mount that on the wall in this orientation, then it can sit right on top of the cyclone and this is the intake so that'll be under there that'll be just like that on top of the cyclone and i don't know people who made that cyclone i don't think i don't think they really really were concerned about how they made it i'm getting a little disillusioned with it to be honest the inside and outside diameters of that top intake thing don't seem to be any correspond to any standards at all um, this is a this is a fairly loose six inch it had this this double this y thing on it uh, which fits fairly tightly there there wasn't even any screws in it, it just fits tightly those are four inch outlets so i thought if i could just couple this directly to the cyclone that would be best case and crazy enough I cut the end out of this coffee can and that's perfect <laughs> for there that fits 100% perfectly drive a couple screws in that perhaps but uh, that the other end of it that cyclone thing is it's it's just a little bit bigger and I can't get that over over top it and I can't get it inside it um, yeah and I don't want to put it inside it because the air uh, the cyclone the air comes out of the cyclone so I don't want this coffee can to go inside the cyclone I want on the outside that's just the way I think the airflow should work most efficiently so I'm off to the store tomorrow perhaps See if I can find some couplers and pipes and things that will help me put this together. 
there's uh, I've got some of these big PVC pieces. See that even fits on there real loose. But yeah, that actually fits on the outlet. Uh, well, not the outlet, the inlet of the cyclone. So I might be using those on the inlet of the cyclone. But for the outlet of the cyclone, I don't really know what I'm going to do. So I've got it all tore apart. And and even that, the outlet of this this blower is, it's not four inch, it's not six inch, it's five inch. So now I've got five inch to deal with. It's just kind of weird. I brought some two by sixes in from outside, just some kind of scrap stuff that's laying around. I'll use that for mounting when I get to it. I need to buy some lag bolts for that whole thing. Uh, yeah, and and so that's kind of where I'm at. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of painted myself into a corner and I knew I would, but I really wanted this project done. There's no better time than now. It's not a good time, but there's no better time. And I just had to do it. So like I say, I'll go to town and see if I can get some bits and pieces, get some bolts and whatnot, start putting this together. It might take me a few more days. Uh, I probably have to be making brackets and things. The problem is if I need any parts made out of wood, I can't make parts out of wood because I, I can't use the table saw without a dust collector. Uh, if, if I, I can, it just, that it fills up with sawdust pretty fast. Uh, so, you know, if I have to cut a few things then okay, I can do that, but you know, it's, it's just not the best situation, uh, overall, but I think it'll be a, a very, um, a very good solution once I do, uh, get this put together. I think that filter was sure slowing down my air. Uh, my air movement. I just feel like the dust collection was very poor last year. Um, the filter is supposed to give me a finer filtration than the bag. And I guess if you think about finer filtration, that would make sense to uh, slow down the air a bit, but that was unacceptable. And I know the bag kind of leaks small particles, but I don't know, it's a compromise. And that's why I put in this filter that's on the ceiling. So anyway, that's what's going on. Tomorrow's Thursday. I'll go to town in the morning, get my things, come back, hopefully put some of this together, find out what my next roadblock is, and then go from there and uh, deal with that again. So I'll update you tomorrow as to how that goes. And a good thing is I got an order today for town. So I have to go to town for an order uh, delivery and I'll do that at the same time and then go to the hardware store and come home. I'll let you know how that goes tomorrow. Take care and have fun. It's Friday, February the 9th, 2024. And the world is frozen and the world is covered in ice. Uh, last evening, well, but last afternoon, it started. Um, it started raining. I did get to town, picked up some bits and pieces, made my deliveries, and uh, I got home about one, maybe one thirty. And when I got home, there was a layer of ice on the front of the truck. Fortunately, the highway wasn't bad at that point but it deteriorated really fast. It was maybe an hour after I got home that there was a major crash on the highway that I came up. Uh, so I think it got icy really fast and I got out of town just in time because now you can see the water that was here because it was raining and the water, you know, big puddle started and then it froze. It's froze solid now. It's minus nine C right now. So the, the extremely warm weather is over and it's said to stay cool and get actually a, a little bit colder by the end of the month. And then uh, it'll warm up again once March hits. 
so I still can't complain. I mean, this is the February of the night. It could be minus 40 out here and it's only minus nine. So it's pretty easy to take. And it looks like uh, at where I am, we've probably skipped the worst of this Colorado low. I think down where Ian is and, and probably where Doug is, they likely got a lot more snow than we got. I haven't talked to them yet though. So I'll have to check in and see how things are doing out there. But anyway, so suffice it to say, anything I left out, like this pallet, uh, is there until it melts because uh, it's frozen in now. And my truck is frozen in, my trailer is sitting in six or eight inches of water, so it's now six or eight inches of ice. And I think it's there until, until the world thaws out. I mean, I might be able to throw some ice melter in under there and give it a chance. But anyway, that's the update on the weather. Um, it was it was a nice run. It was nice to have warm weather for quite some time. Uh, it had not frozen for six days uh, there the last week. It froze, uh, what was it, Thursday night. So it froze Thursday afternoon uh, when the low hit and it had not frozen for uh, uh, six days. I think Thursday night the previous week was the last freezing temperature we had before that. So it was a it was a good run. We melted a lot of snow here. Uh, got a little skiff of snow overnight and there's still a little bit coming down. It's not too bad. Uh, but I'm going to go inside now where it's warm and I'll show you how I'm doing on that dust collector. I've got a long shot of this so you can see it. Uh, this was a, a bear to lift up here. The thing weighs probably, I don't know if it weighs 60, 70 pounds perhaps and I, but I got it up there got it mounted and realized it's in the wrong place so <laughs> that's the thing I'm, I'm working without a net here I'm just kind of putting this together as it goes things are all uh, odd shapes and alignments and stuff so it's just trial and error um, I mounted the the kind of the ring for the the filter in the bag here you can see it's not quite straight even but it'll connect right to the blower. And I think I'll just probably cut that five inch hose. Boy, I don't want to cut that because uh, like I say, that's, that's 10 bucks a foot for that stuff. And you got to buy 10 feet. So if I cut that wrong, that's a hundred dollars to, you know, get it back again. So anyway, uh, the problem here, you can't see the problem. But what's what's above this, so you, you have to remember that big filter goes up here on top of here or the bag, uh, whichever I choose to use. What you can't see is the garage door track is right here. So this is interfering. So the only alternative with this setup is then to move this out farther. And I can do that. This is a two by six mount, it's nice and strong. Um, I can come another, I don't know, four to six inches out here. It's not a problem. This is a bit of a headbanger, but remember that this, this is going to be under it. So there won't really be an opportunity to even stand under it. It should be okay. Uh, and again, here, my problem is in order to mount these two by sixes, I, I want to span this entire length because there's a, there's a framing member here and there's a framing member here. So I want with the two by six to extend all the way from here out to wherever I need to go. And I've cut this now and it's not long enough for that. So I'm into another two by six for that. And that's going to be another eight footer because they're, uh, I forget what I measured there going to need for that, but it's, it's going to need another eight foot two by six. Uh, I think it's going to be 40 inches or something like that each piece. <clears throat> So, and this is the coupler I was complaining about, the outlet of the cyclone. It's not standard size at all with anything, but I did a little quick search and A, I can't believe I didn't find this before or at least search for it. And B, I can't believe the company doesn't sell it with this. This is extremely expensive, these things, but there's actually a, a coupler that you can buy that goes right on here that's made by this company for this 
device, which will then come out into a proper six inch. Put it in the, put it in the box. You know, it's expensive, but I'll pay it. You know, if you're not gonna, if you're not gonna give me a, a outlet I can work with, then you have to make it that way. Anyway, so hopefully, so I did order that, uh, should be here next week. And hopefully then that'll allow me to bring this right up into this blower, just like that. And I think that outlet is probably going to be positioned similarly to where it is right now. You know, I could go anywhere like this. Um, I guess I could go in the back because uh, it does interfere with this, but this is a bag. So the bag could mold around a pipe if I wanted to go out that way, but I'm not sure which way I want to go yet. Uh, I have two things I want to connect. I have my table saw and I have my radio arm saw on the other side. I want to do, and that's the second uh, project I wanted to do before I start to work because the radial arm saw just shoots all the sawdust against the wall and it falls on the floor. So then I have a big pile of sawdust back there. I thought if I can get a, a run going that way, which I actually have a, a six inch run across the ceiling already, um, bring that down radial arm saw. Maybe I can get that sawdust to come up into the dust collector um, when it's when it's ejected from the saw. So did I get anywhere yesterday? Yeah, I kind of did. But honestly, everything I did yesterday, I have to do again. Um, you know, when you're in a mud puddle and you just keep spinning your wheels, you know, that's what I feel like. That's what I'm doing, spinning my wheels. And I can't even go and start, you know, sizing some plywood and stuff because again, this, uh, this is integral. And this is why this has never been done because I, I need this every day. I can't take it apart and, and you know, stomach any down, downtime with it. Uh, so anyway, that's, that's my complaint. And once I get this kind of set up, this is the collection bag. It's kind of heavy. It's got quite a bit in it. So it's, it hooks on there and then I'll just make a, a plywood platform on the bottom here for that to sit on. And the reason, the reason this is high is, you know, normally you could leave that on the floor and that's fine. I just want this run between the blower and the bag to be as short as possible as few curves and elbows as possible. And this is the original uh, mounting platform for the system. So these uprights then are what that ring was connected to. So I think once I get that set up, I'll use these to mount to the plywood platform that the bag is going to sit on and that'll support that ring and the bag and the filter or or a filter bag as I choose. I'm really leaning toward the filter bag because I just believe that this was not giving me, you know, the performance and, and the satisfaction I was looking for. I just spotted this sitting in the corner. It's a piece of two by six uh, beam that I had made nailing a couple of two by sixes together. And I think that's long enough for what I need here. Uh, so I'll have to get that apart. And uh, usually the way to get that apart is to get my sawzall and put a metal blade in the sawzall and just stick it between the the planks and cut the nails. Prying that apart is usually pretty difficult as you can imagine because you know that's that's what you want in a beam. You don't want it to come apart. Let's try and get that apart and then maybe today I can take this down and remount it again. Well, that's a big job though. That thing's so heavy. Well we'll get this apart and then we'll burn that bridge.
So you can see I accomplished something on this today. Uh, if you've uh, sensed frustration in my voice, that's only because there is. Um, I'm frustrated with uh, needing to get pieces and parts that I can't get or going to take a while to get. And I need to get this done so that I can get to work. Um, I was afraid of this. Uh, <laughs> it's too bad I couldn't have done this when I was uh, off for a month there. If I could have, if I would have done this in December, then I could have taken the time when I was off in January to amass the bits and pieces that I need. But I didn't really know what I needed. I didn't know how to do this and what I was going to end up getting. But uh, I won't tell, know till Monday until uh, the local place can get back to me if they can get the parts and uh, how much it'll cost me. So. That's, that's just what it is. I'll put the details of building this in a, in a separate video, just so that I don't blow up the vlog with this. I hope you have a really great weekend. I really, really appreciate you watching, and hopefully we'll be able to make some more headway on this next week. Take care and have fun.